So as, as you all know, um, our, um, our immune system is central to keeping us healthy, keeping us um, uh, safe from infectious diseases, um, from cancers, um, believe it or not, um, tumors are controlled by the immune system. And, um, and so it, the, the, the whole process is a very orchestrated process and it involves um, two different arms. One is the innate arm, the other is the adaptive arm. The innate arm involves the, um, your innate cells that are the, fir the front line of, of um, trying to protect us from um, infectious um, agents. And what these innate cells do is they, uh, first of all, they have to recognize a pathogen as a dangerous organism um, versus, for example, one that lives inside of us, inside of our gut, like the commensals. So their job, the innate cells, their job is to recognize a dangerous pathogen, engulf it, destroy it, but meanwhile, what they do is they, they sent out these inflammatory mediators to the rest of the body to try to recruit adaptive immune cells to the, to the vicinity of where the infection is occurring. And so, um, and, and, so, and then what they do is then they present parts of the, the infectious uh, material to the adaptive cells. Now the adaptive cells are, are made up of two different components. One are the B cells that are responsible for producing antibodies against um, the infectious agent. And what they do, these antibodies will neutralize the pathogen that allows it, and that allows the innate cells to recognize it and, and, and eat it up and destroy it much faster. Now the other, other arm of the adaptive immune response are the T cells, which are the helper CD4 T cells and, and the, the killer CD8 T cells. The job of the helper T cells is to help both the B cells and the killer T cells by again recognizing the type of pathogen or the type of organism that has invaded our body or the type of cancer and, and, and they in return um, send out um, appropriate inflammatory cytokines to again initiate the right type of response and to activate these um, killer T cells to, for example, come and identify the infected cells and, and destroy them. Now, one of the major components of the adaptive immune response is what's called immunological memory. And what happens is that some of these cells that, that, that um, help to clear the infection will end up living in our body for the rest of our lives. And, and, and what is really fascinating is they live in different, in different areas. Um, most of us used to think that these memory cells live in our blood, but now what we're finding is that they actually end up living where they first saw the or original infection. So if, if it was a skin rash or if it was, you know, wherever the infection initially was, these memory cells will live in that area for the rest of, uh, for the rest of our life. And what they do is as soon as they see the infection again, very quickly and very robustly, they respond to, to the infection to the point where sometimes we don't even know that we were reinfected with the same pathogen. So this is a concept of vaccination. This is why we get vaccinated. So the vaccine mimics the primary infection. So this, when you actually do get infected with a pathogen, or um, then your body can respond to it much more quickly. However, what happens is, unfortunately, as we age, um, our, our immune system undergoes what's called immunosenescence. And so it, both the innate and adaptive part of the immune response lose their ability to function as they normally would. So the innate cells are not as good as gulping up um, the pathogens that come in and the, the, the B cells are not producing as good of antibodies and the T cells are not doing their killing. As, um, as they should. And as a result, there's a lot of diseases that are related to aging, such as, for example, um, as you know, uh, um, flu, for example, affects the older population much more than it does the younger population. Or inflammatory diseases, as Eric mentioned, like um, type 2 diabetes, or even autoimmune diseases like um, rheumatoid arthritis. And, and, and especially cancers, where the, our immune system, as it breaks down, it no longer can fight these, um, these various things. Now, um, 
what um, what the scientists are trying to do is they're trying to really, and what my lab focuses on is really trying to understand the, mechani um, the, the molecular mechanism of how these T cells, how these memory T cells are developed. How do they function? Where do they reside? What is the specificity of the pathogen versus the root of the infection versus what are the requirements to make the perfect memory cell that can, that can continue to protect us um, instead of making inflammation? Because one of the components of the age uh, immune system is, um, is that the, these uh, innate cells overproduce some of these inflammatory cytokines. And it's not totally understood why this is happening, but one of the theories is that, for example, some viruses that, um, that infect us chronically, which don't, don't really affect us um, in healthy individuals, such, such as CMV, for example, the background immune system that's constantly working to keep us to keep the virus at a bay is generating a lot of inflammation in the body and as we get older our our, our, our immune our immune cells just get tired and that and and that's one of the thoughts that it's just that they become very senescent and, and, and they're no longer functioning so and and this um, excess inflammation can have um, effect not just on the immune system but also on other parts of the body. For example, the brain, as we'll as as Lee will uh, will tell us more about how this um, this chronic inflammation can actually affect what's going on in our brain. So um, so really to try to understand um, how, how the immune system ages and what are the what are the memory cells that are protective versus versus the ones that are super inf inflammatory is, is is what we focus on um, in our lab and and there are examples for example one of the pathways that John talked about uh, um, for example if you block mTOR using an analog of rapamycin which which blocks one of these pathways that are involved in aging um, and you do that during vaccination in older um, in older individuals, the, the the vaccine actually works much better. So if you block some of these pathways during vaccination, you can improve the immune response that's elicited, and so as a result, these people are better protected and and will um, most likely um, you know have a healthier at least winter. <laughs> All right. With that, I'll, I'll introduce um, Lee, who's going to tell you about how some of this inflammation can actually affect, um, for example, uh, what what goes on in our brain.